Alright, hey folks, welcome back to another video. Uh, recently, the building where I lived had a problem of keeping track of the residents' vehicles and their parking spots. Residents would randomly park their cars in random spots, and the owner of the parking spot would never know who the vehicle belongs to, creating chaos and stress to the owner of the parking spot. After understanding the problem, I designed a solution that would help out the residents of the building. The solution I proposed um, contains the following tools. As first, the first one is going to be a Google Sheet, some Google App Script, and some HTML to power the web app. So Google Sheet will contain all the details of the residents, such as the name, address details of their vehicles, and the assigned parking spot to them. Google App Script will be used to access the data from the Google Sheet, right? And HTML will be used to display the data got by Google App Script to create the web app. Now you might be thinking, how is this web app going to solve the residence problems, right? This must be the first question that's going through your mind as that is how this web app is going to solve the problems the residents are facing. So basically this web app will contain all the details of the residents and include the data of the, the personal details such as the flat number, their name, their phone number and their vehicles. So let's take a scenario where a resident parks their car in a in my parking lot. Let's take an example. I have parking lot number 25 and that's where another resident parks their car. And when I come to I come to park my car, I see that there is another car in my spot. Instead of panicking and getting worried about this situation, all I have to do is open up the web app, search in the car number in the search bar and I'll get the details of the resident that owns the car and I can just call him up and let them know that you parked your car in the wrong parking spot and I'd like you to remove it from here. Um, so now that we've understood the problem and the possible solution that could be proposed to the residents of the building, uh, let's get coding. Right. So this is the sample Google sheet that I have here. This contains the tower of the resident, the flat number, the name of the resident, type of vehicle, you can have a two wheeler, you can have a four wheeler, this is the car number, the parking lot number that they have been assigned by the building authorities, the status of the parking lot, whether it is in use or is it not in use, and then the phone number of the resident. So I'll be leaving the sheet link in the description if you want to work with it and you can work with it simultaneously while I'm doing it here. So let's just go ahead and write the automation script. I've already opened up my Google Apps Script Editor. All you do is go to extensions and click on App Script. So I'm going to go here and uh, basically our project is divided into two parts. First is going to be a Google Apps Script file that is normally created. The second one is going to be an HTML file. So in order to make the HTML file work, we to start with some Google Apps Script code. So I'm just going to clear this out. I'm going to write a new function here that's going to be to get inside which I'm going to be passing an event. And uh, here I'm going to be doing variable HTML output. where I'm going to be doing HTML service dot create, create template from file. And inside this, you need to pass the name of the file, the name of the HTML file. So I'm just going to name this as search, right? And I'm going to do HTML, oops, I'm going to do HTML output dot search. So this part of the code where I'm getting the HTML output dot so this this is this is going to be containing the um, search parameter that is going to be put in by the user while he's accessing while he or she is accessing the web app. So after this, I'm just going to do return HTML output dot evaluate. So let's just understand the code here. I've started out by declaring a do get function, and this is standard Google Apps function that will start your web app. After which we declare the HTML output by creating a template from the HTML file. And uh, here in the HTML output dot search, since we're accepting a search condition parameter from the user on the web app, we're going to be accepting them and we're going to be storing it in this variable. After which we run the final command that is going to be an evaluate function. This is just to render the HTML file that we have created. Right. So now I'm going to go, I'm going to click on the plus button. I'm going to create a new HTML file and I'm going to name this as search. And here we have created an HTML file. I'm just going to go back to my Google Apps Script file. After we do the do get, I need to do a do post function. So I'm going to declare a new function called do post. Inside which I'm going to be passing the event parameter once again. And inside which I'm going to be doing var search. 
inside which I'm going to do e dot parameter dot search and I'm going to do variable HTML output I'm going to do HTML service dot create template from file inside which I'm going to pass in search and after which I'm going to do HTML output dot search is equal to search and in the end I'm just going to do a return HTML output dot evaluate you can click on save so here I've started out by creating a do post function that will basically get the search data from the web app so here I start out by storing the search data that the user has put into the search bar after which we once again call the file inside which we pass the search parameter into the file and in the end we just do a html output dot evaluate function so we have created the html file so let's get into the coding of the html file in just a bit so now that we have if you had seen the demo video that I, I had given you an overview video, I'll leave that link in the description. If you want, you can watch that first. In that, I'd shown you that I am making a table on the web app. So to do that, we need to get the data from the sheet, right? For that, to, to display the function, I mean, to display the data from the sheet. So I'm going to be creating a new function called get sheet data inside which I'm going to be doing some stuff. So here, I'm going to start out by doing a where ss that with spreadsheet app dot get active spreadsheet right after which i'm going to do variable sheet instead which i'm going to do ss dot get sheet by name and i'm going to go to my sheet i'm going to see this name is parking i'm going to copy this out here go here open up the codes paste it in here after which i'm going to do where data range inside which i'm going to do sheet dot get data range after which i'm going to do variable values i'm going to do the data range dot get values and i'm just going to be doing a return values so here i've started out by getting the spreadsheet using the spreadsheet app dot get active spreadsheet function after which i'm getting this specific sheet by the get sheet by name function inside which i'm passing the name of the sheet as a parameter to get the data that we're going to be using we're going to be using the get data range function this function returns the range where data is present in the sheet so we don't need to specify a specific column or row and let like get me data between this and this and after getting the range of the data where it is present we're going to doing we'll be doing the get values function to get all the values after which i'm just going to be returning the values so now that we've got the data it's time to edit the html file and display the data so let's just go to the html file here and let's just get coding so inside the body i'm just going to be declaring a small h1 tag here inside which i'm going to be doing building parking lot and um, I'm going to be writing some some JavaScript code inside this where I'm going to be doing the get URL. I'll be explaining what I'm doing right now. Here, after which I'm going to be doing a, I'm going to be creating a form where I'm going to do a post method in the action and after this i'm going to do the action it's going to be for the url i will be explaining the url section once i create the url function in my google app script after which i'm going to be creating a label for the form i'm going to do a sir i'm just going to write in search i'm going to close the label and um, i'm going to be doing some input here Inside, I'm going to be specifying that it's going to be a type, it's going to be a text type inside which I want the name to be search with a value. I'm going to want, I'm going to want it to be stored in the search. Right. And um, I'm going to be doing one more input here. And in this one, I'm going to, it's going to be as a button that as soon as the user puts in the search parameter and he clicks on the button, it should be a submit, it should be a submit. And uh, I'm going to be just naming it, I'm going to do search 
button I'm gonna do value it's going to be search and I'm just going to be closing out the form here and I'm going to be adding this stability so let's just click on save so now I'm going to be going through what I've done here so here I started out by declaring the uh, declaring the HTML stuff that's done that that's there normally and um, I have declared the header for the web app that's going to be building parking lot and uh, after which I have been I'm, I'm getting the URL of the, of the Google Sheet that we are using so why are, why am I doing this? We're going to be uh, we're doing this so that we can use the post function below. So this code calls the uh, that it calls another function that is present in Google App Sheet, which we will take a look at in the later part of the tutorial. Next, uh, we are declaring the label for the search bar followed by declaring an input tag. This tag will accept the query inputted by the user and store it. After which we're declaring the button, um, which on click will show you the data according to the search parameter you put in. So now I'm going to be, uh, right now we just saw the URL function. Now I'm going to be telling you, what we're going to write, we're going to be going ahead and writing the um, Google Apps Strip code for the get URL function. Where you'll understand what, what we are trying to do. So I'm going to do variable URL. I'm going to be just doing the script app dot get service. I'm going to close the brackets. I'm going to do an, I'm going to do a get URL. And after which I'm going to do return URL. So um, inside this function, we just use the script app function that will get us the current sheet URL. So we know what we are interacting with, right? So uh, the next part of the co of this code is going to be the most important part of the tutorial. This part of the code creates a table that is going to be displayed on the web app. So let's just understand the code step by step i'm just going to be copy pasting this code which will reduce more complications while understanding this video i have already pre-written this code so i'm just going to go ahead i'm just going to paste this code into the html part after the form i'm going to paste this here and now we're going to be understanding this step by step right so we're going to start out by and looking at the top we're going to start out by declaring the table inside which we declare the border of the table and the cell padding value and uh, next so we enter this here. Next, we're going to be writing some Google, some JavaScript to get the table data. We're going to be, going to be calling the get sheet data function. That is going to be getting the Google apps uh, is that is going to be getting the data from the sheet. So we just wrote this function a few minutes back. So next, we're going to start off by displaying the table data using a couple of for loops and display the data by getting each row from the table data variable. Right. So this is what I've done here for the table level. We're going to display the data here. I'm going to be displaying each row of data using the two for loops here. After which uh, we're going to be converting the search parameter to a lower case that's going to be coming out here. And then we're going to be searching it for the table. So here we do a string search that if the search matches, it will get the index of the search and using those indexes, it's going to be uh, get, displaying the data according to the search made by getting the row that is the specific indexes and that, that matches the search made by the user. So this is what this code basically does. You, you don't have to get into the complexity of this code. I'll be leaving the this code and the HTML code link in the description if you want to copy paste it and just get the output immediately. And um, I'm happy to say our code is complete and it is good to go. So we've written the Google Apps script part of the web app and also completed the HTML template that we'll be displaying and which will show a specific data based on the search that is made in the search bar. So let's just go ahead. And uh, in this tutorial, we're going to be doing some deployment of web apps. So I'm going to be showing you that. So I think everything is ready. I'm just going to click on save. When you go, I'm going to be clicking on deploy this project and I'm going to click on new deployment. So before you deploy, you need to select the type of deployment. Either you have an API, you have an add-on, you have a library that people can install, or it's a web app, like a website that everybody can access. So I'm going to click on web app. And in the description, I'm going to say, uh, version one web app parking. And um, after this, you have some options that you have to select. So you want to execute this as you or the user that is accessing the web app for now. I think I'm just going to leave it to myself since only I'm going to be accessing this. And after which you need to specify who has the access to the web app. Either it can be only you that is only with the signed in email. Like for this example, it's going to be this email. But if you want it to be anybody with a Google account or anybody with a link for now, I'm just going to keep it with myself. I'm just going to go ahead and click on deploy. 
so before you even deploy you need to give access to the you need to give some access to it authorizing access so i'm just going to click on authorize access and here i'm going to select my email address here and i'm going to go to advanced you click on go to entitled project i'll have to save the name of the project you just need to click on allow And in a few seconds, your web app will be deployed successfully. So here you can see deployment successfully updated. I had to do another version because there, there was some error that I was facing while deploying it. But you can see here we have the deployment ID, the web app for the URL. And if I click on this, here you can see our uh, web app has successfully been loaded. And here you can see all the data from the Google Sheet has been displayed on the web app. And if I do a search, let's say um, I can see a car that is parked in front of me that has a number for 5616. So if I do 5616 and I click on enter, I get the data according to the search that I've made here. And I can see it is a scooter that has been parked here with the phone number. And I can call up the resident and I can tell them to remove their vehicle from my parking lot. So this is how we can, um, this, this was basically the solution for the problem that the residents were facing. So in this video, we could see how we could build a web app filter that allows you to search through data present in your Google Sheets. Additionally, we saw how you could display data from your Google Sheets on the web app. And also we learned something about how to deploy web apps uh, in Google Apps Script. And um, I hope you understood everything and I hope you understood the idea and the motive behind the project. I'll be leaving the entire project GitHub link in the description and check it out. I'll be leaving the sheet link in the description and check that out. If you like this video, then don't forget to like, share and for more content, hit the subscribe button. I'll see you in the next one.